Alfred Jerry. Alfred Jerry, September 8, 1873, November 1, 1907, was a French symbolist writer who is best known for his play Ubu Roi, 1896. A pataphysical work which depicts the bourgeoisie as the super mediocre. He coined the term and philosophical concept of pataphysics, which uses absurd irony to portray symbolic truths, and playfully vice versa. Jerry was born in Laval, Mayenne, France, and his mother was from Brittany. He was associated with the symbolist movement. His play Ubu Roi is often cited as a forerunner of Dada and the surrealist and futurist movements of the 1920s and 1930s. He wrote in a variety of hybrid genres and styles, prefiguring the postmodern, including novels, poems, short plays, and opera booths, absurdist essays, and speculative journalism. His texts are considered examples of absurdist literature and postmodern philosophy. His father, Anselm Jerry, 1837 to 1895, was a salesman who descended into alcoholism. His mother Caroline, née Ernest, 1842 to 1893, was interested in music and literature, but her family had a streak of insanity, and her mother and brother were institutionalized. The couple had two surviving children, a daughter Caroline Marie, called Charlotte, 1865 to 1925, and Alfred. In 1879 Caroline left Anselm and took the children to St. Briouk in Brittany. In 1888 the family moved to Rennes, where Jerry entered the lycée at 15. There he led a group of boys who enjoyed poking fun at their well-meaning, but obese and incompetent physics teacher, a man named Hébert. Jerry and his classmate, Henri Morin, wrote a play they called Les Polonies and performed it with marionettes in the home of one of their friends. The main character, Per H.E.B., was a blunderer with a huge belly, three teeth, one of stone, one of iron and one of wood, a single, retractable ear and a misshapen body. In Jerry's later work Ubu Roi, Per H.E.B. would develop into Ubu, one of the most monstrous and astonishing characters in French literature. At 17 Jerry passed his baccalaureate and moved to Paris to prepare for admission to the École Normale Supérieure. Though he was not admitted, he soon gained attention for his original poems and prose poems. A collection of his work, Les Minutes de Sable Memorial, was published in 1893. That same year, Jerry contracted influenza. His mother and sister tended him, but once he recovered his mother fell ill of the disease and died. Two years later his father perished from influenza as well, leaving Jerry a small inheritance which he quickly spent. Jerry had meantime discovered the pleasures of alcohol, which he called my sacred herb or, when referring to absinthe, the green goddess. A story is told that he once painted his face green and rode through town on his bicycle in its honor, and possibly under its influence. When he was drafted into the army in 1894, his gift for turning notions upside down defeated attempts to instill military discipline. The sight of the small man in a uniform much too large for his less than five foot frame, the army did not issue uniforms small enough, was so disruptively funny that he was excused from parades and marching drills. Eventually the army discharged him for medical reasons. His military experience eventually inspired his novel Days and Nights. Jerry returned to Paris and applied himself to writing, drinking and the company of friends who appreciated his witty, sweet-tempered and unpredictable conversation. This period is marked by his intense involvement with Remy de Gourmand in the publication of Limagier, a luxuriously produced art magazine debited to the symbolic analysis of medieval and popular prints. Symbolism as an art movement was in full swing at this time, and Limagier provided an excess for many of its key contributors. Jerry's play Caesar Antichrist, 1895, drew on this movement for material. This is a work that bridges the gap between serious symbolic meaning and the type of critical absurdity with which Jerry would soon become associated. Using the biblical book of Revelation as a point of departure, Caesar Antichrist presents a parallel world of extreme formal symbolism in which Christ is resurrected not as an agent of spirituality but as an agent of the Roman Empire that seeks to dominate spirituality. It is a unique narrative that effectively links the domination of the soul to contemporaneous advances in the field of Egyptology such as the 1894 excavation of the Narmer Palette, an ancient artifact used for situating the rebus within hermeneutics. The character Ubu Roi first appears in this play. The spring of 1896 saw the publication, in Paul Fort's review Le Livre d'Ar, of Jerry's five act play Ubu Roi, the rewritten and expanded Les Polonais office school days. Ubu Roi has savage humor and monstrous absurdity, unlike anything thus far performed in French theater, 
seemed unlikely to ever actually be performed on stage. However, impetuous theater director Aurelian Marie Lunpo took the risk, producing the play at his Theater de Louvre. On opening night, December 10, 1896, with traditionalists and the avant garde in the audience, King Ubu, played by Furman Jemir, stepped forward and intoned the opening word, murdery. Often translated as pshit or shit or in English. A quarter of an hour of pandemonium ensued, outraged cries, booing, and whistling by the offended parties, countered by cheers and applause by the more degenerate contingent. Such interruptions continued through the evening. At the time, only the dress rehearsal and opening night performance were held, and the play was not revived until after Jerry's death. The play brought fame to the 23 year old Jerry, and he immersed himself in the fiction he had created. Jemier had modeled his portrayal of Ubu on Jerry's own staccato, nasal vocal delivery, which emphasized each syllable, even the silent ones. From then on, Jerry would always speak in this style. That he adopted Ubu's ridiculous and pedantic figures of speech, for example, he referred to himself using the royal we, and called the wind that which blows in the bicycle he rode everywhere that which rolls. Jerry moved into a flat which the landlord had created through the unusual expedient of subdividing a larger flat by means of a horizontal rather than a vertical partition. The diminutive Jerry could just manage to stand up in the place, but guests had to bend or crouch. Jerry also took to carrying a loaded revolver. In response to a neighbor's complaint that his target shooting endangered her children, he replied, If that should ever happen, madam, we should ourselves be happy to get new ones with you. With Frank Nohan and Claude Terrasse he co-founded the Théâtre des Pantins, which in 1898 was the site of marionette performances of Ubu Aroi. Living in worsening poverty, neglecting his health and drinking excessively, Jerry went on to write the novel Le Surmail, the Supermail, which is partly a satire on the symbolist ideal of self-transcendence. Unpublished until after his death, his fiction exploits and opinions of Dr. Faust Troll, pataphysician, just had opinions du Dr. Faust Troll. Pataphysician, describes the exploits and teachings of a sort of Anna philosopher who, born at age 63, travels through a hallucinatory Paris in a sieve and subscribes to the tenets of pataphysics. Pataphysics deals with the laws which govern exceptions and will explain the universe supplementary to this one. In pataphysics, every event in the universe is accepted as an extraordinary event. Jerry once wrote, expressing some of the bizarre logic of pataphysics, if you let a coin fall and it falls, the next time it is just by an infinite coincidence that it will fall again the same way, hundreds of other coins on other hands will follow this pattern in an infinitely unimaginable fashion. In his final years, he was a legendary and heroic figure to some of the young writers and artists in Paris. Guillaume Apollinaire, André Salmon and Max Jacob sought him out in his truncated apartment. Pablo Picasso was fascinated with Jerry. After Jerry's death Picasso acquired his revolver and wore it on his nocturnal expeditions in Paris. He later bought many of his manuscripts as well as executing a fine drawing of him. Jerry died in Paris on November 1, 1907 of tuberculosis, aggravated by drug and alcohol use. When he could not afford alcohol, he drank ether. It is recorded that his last request was for a toothpick. He was interred in the Cimetière de Bagneau, near Paris. The complete works of Alfred Jerry are published in three volumes by Gallimard in the collection Bibliothèque de la Playade. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.